a new small SUV with off-road look and even real all-wheel drive possibilities. Let's take a look at the Toyota Yaris Cross here in Autogefühl with Thomas. In the front, we can see really bold styling, especially in the lower area. This is a so-called adventure trim. There you get this additional bar right here. We will also show you the elegance trim as comparison, which looks a little bit more elegant and less off-roadish, but overall a strong front for this small SUV, also here with the grill. LED lamps are from standard and interesting at the daytime running light, even when it's out, it always looks like it is in because just styling wise, they've designed it in a way that it always looks on. Yeah, interesting, definitely. And in the side profile, you can see these huge wheel arches as a contrast up to 18 inch wheels. These are the ones also you can see right there. In the length, actually, that's very interesting. When you compare the normal Yaris to the Yaris Cross, this one here looks way larger, but actually the platform and the wheelbase is the same. The difference is real, it's a little bit higher, has more ground clearance, 2.5 centimeters. Overall then, 24 centimeters or nine inches longer than the normal Yaris. And you also get a contrasting roof right here. And the Adventure trim level also has these roof rails. Towards the rear, we can see this typical Yaris, like it's overlapping form, a strong Toyota design, very extravagant. Yeah, kind of like an integrated rear wing. And once again, more off-road accentuations here in the lower part, especially in this Adventure trim level. So what do you think? Tell me in the comments. There. Here in the shadows, we can see the rear lamps of a very nice, slim form. And when you hear, put on turning indicators, wow, even cascading. Interesting, by the way, this is the data run like when the car is standing and I have it to, you know, to this position. But when I put it to the automatic lighting mode, then the top part is out and the lower part is the data run light while driving. And also when I put on the turning indicators or the you know, hazard lights, then the lower part replaces it interesting. The total length, by the way, 4 meters 18 or 165 inches. So it's actually shorter than you might expect from the looks. And by the way, as for the all-wheel drive system, so usually it comes as standard with front-wheel drive. And when you have the optional hybrid version, or for example in Germany, there's only the hybrid version available, just the electric motor is powering the front wheels. And it's combustion engine and electric motor in the front. If you go for the all-wheel drive version, you have an additional electric motor also at the rear axle. This have, has an effect on the trunk, for example, and the maximum distribution is 40-60, so maximum of 60% power at the rear. But usually, even if you go all-wheel drive, it will still be front rear biased. The rear electric motor is only active when there is wheel spin, or let's say beginning to detect slippery conditions in the front. So it's not like you would hit the throttle and there's more throttle in the rear, uh, no more power in the rear like with Hilux clutch systems or something. It's really more that you have the all-wheel drive for slippery conditions. And as an alternative, we also have a different color for you today. Here, this you know, rather golden color, also very attractive. Unique, you have to be brave to go for that one. Also contrasting wheel arches, of course, but this is the elegance trim level. First of all, it does not have the roof rails like we've seen in the adventure trim. And also here, more elegant, <laughs> as the name says, this is here in vehicle color, whereas the adventure trim would have this additional contrast bar right here. So you can also vary a little bit in the stylings then. And here you can see the direct comparison the Yaris Cross and the traditional normal Yaris here. How much bolder the Cross version actually is. I think it's a very interesting comparison to see right here. Mostly from the front. It also has a stronger front overhang, by the way, here, the Yaris Cross. And of course, generally, you can see the height, especially then it's like three quad perspective, see how much higher the Yaris Cross is. Oh, uh, have you noticed the Z3 there in the background, the Vinjet Z3? Well, I certainly have, and if you have already noticed it earlier, then put it in the comments, but beautiful, right? Yeah, off topic, but sorry, I had to. <laughs> this is the car key, nothing special, and door closing sound. It's also rather mediocre. Then, inside of the doors, hard pack top bar, this is also, you know, the segment, but here we have a nice fabric insert that also looks quite fancy, but this is also like taken from the normal Yaris. Then the cross has special entry badges and also branded 
claw mats, at least with this badge right there. Then we have this rather modern steering wheel we know from the new Yaris generation, similar to the instruments. And there's also news from the infotainment system. Seats are very attractive. They have this kind of sporty style with the, yeah, you know, this very form shoulder part. These are leatherette applications and the rest in this fabric. You can also get a full leather red seat and Toyota just told me here, the product managers, that they make a commitment also to get rid of animal materials in the car. Not yet at the steering wheel, but definitely also a lot of progress there in the Toyota corporation. Then let's get inside. One means 86 or 6 with 1. Frequent or long-term subscribers know it here. And still, let's put it in the lowest position. Still a lot of headroom left, no problem. So it is a small vehicle. But still, you feel actually quite comfortable as a tall person. Steering wheel also in, out, up, down. So actually nice movement possible. And also the seat can be moved up like this, pumping it up, y'all. Yeah, and then it also goes a little bit, you know, straighter. So considering it's not a big vehicle, it actually feels quite spacious in the front. Interior overview, we see you know, a lot of playing around actually, like these overlapping elements. This is here soft touch. Then we have this gold and accentuations. Would rather fit to the golden exterior. This is the hard pack. Here again, this you know, round shape also for the climate unit. And good to have still a manual climate unit to control the temperature and also the vent strength. Really like that. Here also for the Iris Cross, the hill descent control you can activate right there. With a nice clicking sound even. In the lower part, inductive charging pad for your phone. And in this case, it makes sense because here you see there is an induct, uh, not only inductive charging pad, but also wireless connection for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. But you can also use the cable, so you have the choice actually. It starts then with an 8 inch screen. This is the new option 9 inch screen. And the difference is not only the size, but also the software. First of all, Apple CarPlay integration and the sound here actually is very decent for a small vehicle. So nice um, natural feeling sound and the integration of the car is also good here. And then the um, Toyota system here, this is completely new software. And so completely different from the system we know before and also better, especially here the inbuilt GPS. However, it is better than the other one, but just because the other one is even worse. <laughs> you know, this also here not responsive at all. We're in Belgium here today, so greetings to all our Belgium fans. Yeah, so you have these hotkeys here at the side. And this is then a hotkey here to the Apple CarPlay, but you see, use the Apple CarPlay and the Android Auto even if you go for this system. And then actually you can say, yeah, just go for the smaller screen, save the money because the rest of it both systems internally are not that well usable, actually. So what else? If we move further down, we have the automatic shifting lever, D, or then the B mode that gives us, you know, some more, yeah, okay, more uh, engine brake. And then further down below, we have the EV mode button. But usually, I mean, the car drives in EV mode when it thinks it makes sense anyway. So yeah, that's kind of it. Here in the Iris Cross, you can push to normal driving mode, but also have a trail or snow mode. Then the all-wheel drive system is used a little bit more, actually. And then we have this split armrest. This is you know, also some soft touch up, small case here. Then we can fold it up, more access than yeah, relative to cup holders, but they are not adaptive. You know, we are the channel of details, and that's why here for a, let's say, rather budget vehicle, dampened glove box like that they implemented that feature. The steering wheel has a sporty shape, also a very compact form and a good sporty uh, handling overall. And here the cruise control still with real buttons on the right side, left side then to control something of the instruments or also with the volume control. And here we have like a split, right and left is analog and the middle part with a digital screen just with the standard speed and so on. You cannot change too much um, in there, just what you want to see in the in, in the very middle part, but that's actually then also not too much what you can show there. An interesting option is however the head-up display. Really rare to have it in this very segment and you have a good view to the front and you don't have to look down into the instruments. You also have the nice fabric leather red mix for the rear seats. That's really looking good. However, there's one catch. I mean, you have Isofix on the outside seats each, but there we go. So for, for the child seats. But then again, this door here 
it hardly opens, you know, so that's a little bit tough then to get the child seats in and out. For me, it's no problem. I can get in and out with this door, but then again with the leg room, yeah, I mean, it's tiny vehicle, so um, yeah, for tall adults, it's not the most, uh, you know, comfortable thing in the rear. Do hit, hit the seat here with my knees. Headroom, however, this is actually quite okay, and there's also a good advantage here for the Yaris Cross. It's a higher vehicle, so headroom-wise, you can sit here. Just with the legs, it's a little bit closed, and, but I mean, if I move my feet all the way back and stretch my legs a little bit, um, yeah, then it kind of works. So um, I think the usage of space is very good. It's just that the overall length is still short. For the trunk, you can also get an electric hatch and has a little beeping sounds as well. And we put some luggage inside. John's camera backpack here, cabin trolley, another backpack. So it fits very well. 320 liter here for the all-wheel drive version. 400 liters it would be for the front-wheel drive version. The reason for that I will show you very soon. Let's begin here. So the height here with the cover is about 40 centimeters or 16 inches in the lowest position. But here it's a little bit higher underneath this cover here. Well, you know, like this, but the total overall height is here 29 inches or 73 centimeters. Yeah, you can also <laughs> remove that cover completely. Here in the Overdrive drive version, you still have some space underneath, but not as much as in the front drive version. Again, soon the comparison to that. Length here is you know, about 30 inches or some yeah, almost 80 centimeters. So overall, well usable that one. And then depending on the trim level here, this is the higher one. Then you also have the middle split here with the ski hatch. Otherwise, the base version will just feature a 60-40 split here in this case, then you can also, yeah, that's always the same. Jonas is so high, so tall, <laughs> we always uh, have to move the front seat in the front. Yeah, then you can have this folding part here and the overall length. So here we go, it's then 66 inches or almost 170 centimeters. And here let's compare the front wheel drive trunk because when you do not have the additional electric motor in the rear, there's more space in the trunk. However, here this top cover is a little bit higher than in the all-wheel drive version. That means here the all-wheel drive version went till here. So this is then a little bit more shallow, but just when the cover is mounted. And then you have this split cover like this more flexible and then you have this additional storage underneath. So the overall height of the trunk with the front wheel drive is of course higher than here when we measure it here. It's then here 22 inches. Yeah, 22 inches or 55 centimeters. That's interesting. So you're definitely more flexible. You can also then take it out completely or both of course. And then you even more have this lower storage underneath or for the replacement tire and so on and so on. So overall then, if you want more luggage flexibility, then go for the two-wheel drive version. No matter if you go front-wheel drive, all-wheel drive, or the pure combustion engine or the inbuilt hybrid. It's all based here on the 1.5 liter, three cylinder, naturally aspirated petrol engine. System out with always something 120 horsepower, so not too fast, of course. And when you go for the hybrid, then you have a lithium ion battery as a small buffer battery. It serves right here, as we know from the Toyota systems. 130 kilometers an hour is the top pure electric speed. 170 kilometers an hour is the top overall speed. Welcome to Thomas's Driving Lounge here with the Yaris Cross and also in the hybrid version, all-wheel drive. And here, by the way, if you think you need to see your local opt optometrist, no, the rear view camera is really that bad. So that's a disappointment. But let's see about the other stuff. And if it's using the hybrid system, the electric, pure electric driving or not, really depends on conditions. If you have like AC on, how full the battery is actually, Usually at the moment like this, you can start in the EV mode and that's good for your local neighborhood, for example. But here, the battery is not too full. Here now you can hear that the combustion engine is also on. So it really depends. The vehicle automatic, you know, going off the throttle automatically goes back in there. Suspension here, you feel you're sitting a little bit higher than in a normal Yaris, but the looks is definitely the crucial thing, you know. So 
and of course the you know the, the interior and exterior height but surprisingly although it looks so much different than the normal Yaris it doesn't drive that different that's really interesting and of course that's due to the same wheelbase same platform and so on but yeah I mean there are some differences definitely but it's really astonishing that that you can have you know this completely different exterior but still remains somewhat of this small car feeling the steering is really nice and precise nice and precise that's a good marketing slogan, right like buy the new steering wheel nice and what did it say nice and precise right okay once again buy this new steering wheel it's nice and precise <laughs> okay so what i mean is here there's no dead zone area like this and also really natural feeling of what I'm doing with the steering. So yeah, that's really, really good. Of course, there's not much power to expect from, you know, be it the hybrid engine or also the, the normal combustion engine. It's more about than, of course, the fuel economy where you can just use a few liters per 100 kilometers here with the hybrid engine. It will be more efficient, especially in city driving because here then you have these moments again where it's only electric mode you have some recuperation when going downhill and so on and this then really makes sense therefore some of the markets like the german market go for hybrid only models overview when i'm looking to the rear so it's quite good also to the sides so can't complain there at all it is also packed with assistant systems and most of them are also standard, like the adaptive cruise control, for example. And there's also a blind spot monitor and so on. The head-up display is an option, yes. And this is also a difference to the normal Yaris. Here, we can get a head-up display, where the normal Yaris does not get a head-up display. So that's one thing, you know, a big advantage, definitely. typical three-cylinder sound. The three-cylinders sound actually sportier than the four-cylinders. That's yeah, quite astonishing, just based on the, you know, on the cylinder count, actually. Um, you will soon also hear when I, what it's like when I accelerate a little bit harder. But here, what I found quite nice is that the seats are actually very comfortable, so they not only look cool, but they're actually also really comfortable. And once again, oh, bird. Uh, and once again, you sit a little bit higher than the Yaris, but it's not a completely different driving feeling. So overall, for such a small car, it's it's really relaxed, I would I would call it that way. And really the seat ergonomics, they have improved it so much if you compare previous generation Yaris and then here this current generation, be it cross or not cross. So this is one of the major things that taller people feel now more at home in this new Yaris generation. And here, of course, you then have a little bit more trunk, especially here in, in the cross version and just yeah, more design and, and style and so on. I also have this hybrid gauge, by the way, here in the instruments where I can check it out, what's happening. And with the rear electric motor, it's not that it would be running all the time. So in most situations, this will feel completely the same four-wheel drive or two-wheel drive. Difference is really as soon there is there if there's a wheel spin like in snowy conditions or something, then the rear electric motor sets in. Why did they do that? They wanted to still concentrate on the front combustion engine and electric front electric motor due to the fuel economy. So they say that's just better for that, and so they didn't go for you know any major share in the rear or something. It is possible, as I said earlier, up to 60% of the power to the rear. But that's again just in these slippery conditions or when I pick the trail mode, for example, intentionally or the snow mode, these modes then switch the parameters a little bit more. And well, let's see if we can somehow feel that. Oh, there's fixed speed camera in 500 meters, it says. That's good. So yeah, I said earlier that the new infotainment system is not that good, but Maybe we are still becoming friends after all, right? Thank you for the notice. Oh, there's also a sign off for the street camera. So, now we're in on throttle, then to normal mode. Hmm. Do you feel any difference, Jonas? No. Once again, uphill now acceleration. This is all front wheel. 
now to the snow mode. It's hardly that you feel any difference down here, but so it will just be when there's really some, you know, beginning to have wheel spin in the front in these conditions, then you will more feel the rear. So it's maybe something when you are really in snowy conditions, like, you know, typically when you're like in Minnesota or something, or yeah, or in the Alps region in Europe, then there would be an overdrive coming really handy and you might go for that. But other than that, I would rather say, yeah, you can also stick with the two wheel drive version, front wheel drive version. And then as we shown earlier, you also have some more space in the trunk. I think that is actually the better advantage. As for going hybrid or non-hybrid, when you have the choice on your market, the Toyota's hybrid systems are actually, there's another one, um, are actually very interesting because here, for example, then stuck in traffic, you can use this as well. So the question is, are you predominantly doing motorway runs, even though it's a small car and you're driving long ways, steady speed, and the hybrid system won't do such an effect. But if you have a lot of city driving included or here topography changes, then it does make sense and also gives you consumption advantages. Um, let's see what we could score here so far. Yeah, we're now at an average about like five liters or something, but we didn't drive too far yet. But when we go down here, here now, for example, all the way in the EV mode, and then you can also on the you know, you know long run, you can also score some four liters or more kilometers, for example. It really always depends on the conditions. Overall, I have to say, it feels kind of small car-like still. It doesn't feel so much SUV from the inside and it looks like this from the outside. This is, for example, different in the VW T-Cross, which does feel significantly different from, from the VW Polo, for example. With the Ford Puma, mm, yeah, that's the thing. It does feel also quite similar to the Fiesta there as well. And this is also where the competition definitely comes from. So, and I want to show you one more acceleration, definitely. So let's get to a little faster road and do it there. Yeah, definitely good to have the good fuel economy. Now close, like four and a half liters more in kilometers. So 50 plus MBG US or in something between 60 and 70 MBG UK really decent. Then let's go in the driving mode to the power mode and accelerate it out. Let's see from 40. kilometers an hour. Woo! Racing and that was also uphill. We really have to say that. Because an even even fiercer test. Yeah, so for autobahn overtaking maneuvers, not the best one of course. But you know at one kilometers an hour or 60 miles an hour, it's actually quite decent as for the noise insulation. That's also something they majorly worked here in this new generation. Suspension wise by the way when you have like normal road conditions, it's actually quite nice how it dampens out waves and so on. And also, it doesn't lean too much to the left and the right, so that feels very good and natural. Just when you drive over some fierce bumps, yeah, then it does get rough from suspension. However, since you have this good seating position and the great seating, you know, ergonomics and so on, it's not that it would, it would hurt in your lower back or something. So, definitely for me, the seats, basically the best here, both in the new Yaris and the new Yaris Cross here. The head-up display is special for the Yaris Cross. And to me, the best advantage for the Yaris Cross that they have just more space than in the trunk because of the longer rear overhang. And of course, this, yeah, you know, this cool crossover look, definitely. Now tune in to the Ford Puma, Ford Puma review. This is one of the main competitors or also the VW T-Cross. Let's see how they compare to this one here. 